Hi everyone, I'm Brooke Tatro. In this video, we are working on getting our horses prepared to tie or cross tie. I think it's really important that they understand how to stand quietly before they're restricted by either being tied hard or hooked into the cross ties. So I hope you enjoy. So let's just discuss this a little bit while I go through my grooming process um, here with Paris. So I'm sure you've all been to the, that barn or maybe you're at that barn now where when you walk through, you know, horses are hooked in the cross ties and they're pawing and wiggling and throwing their heads and um, or you've seen ones that are tied hard and that suck back, which um, is such a terrible habit and a very hard one to break. Uh, but it is preventable and I think it's really important that you take a good amount of time teaching your horse how to stand quietly um, before you would tie him or cross tie him. I very rarely use cross ties anyway. Um, I might if I just need to leave the horse unattended for a minute while I run to the restroom or grab something I forgot but most of the time um, they're just gonna ground tie or I'm gonna hold the lead rope in my hand and then sometimes depending where I'm at or what I'm doing I'll tie them hard but rarely do I use cross ties. I think that they're used because the person doesn't want to take the time to teach the horse how to stand quietly so it's just a shortcut and we all know that those never end up um, being what we want in the end. So my goal for this part of the video is just to show you how actually simple it is to just hold the lead rope while you're doing your daily grooming and saddling. Um, this is when the horses spend the most time tied or in the cross ties or whatnot is when you're getting them ready for their ride. Um, so I just thought I'd go through my little daily grooming process here, pick their feet, curry comb them, brush them, brush their manes and tails, put some fly spray on, all the normal stuff, and just show you that it's not that difficult and not that much work to um, work on this every day. So this horse is, you know, pretty quiet for a real green three-year-old, but there was a time when she wasn't. And so if your horse is really wiggly, it just cannot even remotely stand still at all, then I would take him in the arena and do some groundwork and then bring him back in and try to groom him or do your groundwork and just groom him in the arena. That's fine too, but set them up to be successful. So instead of getting upset with them and and having to be too busy just help them out move them around a little bit take the edge off and then and then groom them I think a lot of people um, get frustrated when their horse is dancing all over the place while they're trying to groom them and saddle them and I think that's ultimately why they end up hooking them in the cross ties <laughs> so that they don't have to deal with it and um, it's just not a good way to do things because they need to learn these little lessons and you need to be able to make the adjustments to help them stay centered and stay quiet. And the cross ties just aren't going to do that. It's, all you're doing is restricting their movement. You're not teaching them anything. So whatever you got to do um, to set them up to be successful so that they can stand quietly. It's, it's a good investment of your time and effort um, because once you kind of get this working for you well, it'll last the rest of their lives. So it's worth spending some time on the first, you know, few months or however long that you're working with a horse to get this good. So it's pretty simple. I'm just gonna loop the lead rope over my arm, uh, whichever arm is easiest depending on 
what side I'm on and what I'm doing. And um, that way I can give them little corrections. If she walks forward, I'll back her up. If she walks backwards, I'll bring her forward. If she's, you know, sniffing the groom box or chewing on the cross ties or whatever, I can fix those little things each time they happen. And then when she's just standing quietly, I can just uh, leave her be. And they learn pretty quick that it's a pretty nice thing just to stand here and, and get brushed and fussed over. Um, and they can, they just relax right into it. Getting this really good is also very important leading up to actually tying your horse to something solid. Um, we talked a little bit earlier about sucking back and what a terrible habit that is and, and how hard it is to break once they start to do it. Um, and most of us are going to want to tie our horses. You know, we're going to tie them to get them ready. We're going to tie them in the horse trailer. We're going to tie them to the outside of the horse trailer. Um, so... It's something really, really useful to be able to do, but also needs the appropriate prep work so that you don't get one sucking back or, or having um, problems being tied. And this is a large part of how to be successful at that. Just making sure that they know how to stand quietly during all of this and getting saddled. And then of course, the second part of that is them being good at their groundwork and knowing how to give to pressure and come forward off of pressure and all those things so Occasionally, if both hands are really busy, like brushing the tail, I'll just stick the lead rope in between my knees. Um, it might not be the most technically correct thing, but I could still grab a hold of that pretty quickly and make corrections if I needed to. Um, and once they get pretty good at this, I'll just leave the lead rope laying on the ground or, or lay it over their back. And I don't need to have it in my hand all the time. They'll just stand quietly and ground tie. And that's really what I'm looking for before I start tying one hard. But I'm just trying to show you guys in this video how it doesn't slow me down in my grooming process at all. I can just go right around, do what I need to do, all with the lead rope in my hand. Now I'm just going to show you how to saddle them doing the same thing. Um, this horse is young. I don't saddle her in the grooming area. I could, but um, I'm riding a lot of young horses right now, so I'd rather just um, throw my saddle on the fence and then I can saddle everybody in the arena. And um, that way, if we have any trouble or need to move our feet, we, we have plenty of room to do it. Plus, I'm little and my saddle weighs a lot and I really got to give it a good swing to get it on uh, most of these horses. So I just have way more room in the arena to do that. But the concept is the same as with the grooming. I just am looping the lead rope over my arm. So that way, if she moves around and I need to make... Um, some small corrections to keep her in the middle, it's easy and quick to do. Um, but your horse should definitely be able to stand quietly getting saddled before um, 
you know, I would do it anywhere else. And I think it was Ray Hunt that said something like, I never sat on my horse when it's tied because I like them too much. <laughs> and I try to remember that. So even if I have my horse tied to the trailer and I might groom them and throw the saddle pad on, but when I go to throw the saddle up and, and cinch them up, I, I always untie them just in case. This particular horse um, found the saddling process pretty troubling for quite a long time. Um, so it's really important um, to keep working on it till they can stand real quiet and relax like this. So for me, it was really beneficial that I was confident and comfortable saddling them, holding the lead rope. <clears throat> and I would have to brush her and then bring her in, do you know, 15 or 20 minutes of groundwork, then saddle her, then do another 15 or 20 minutes of groundwork before I rode. Um, we've obviously made it past that. Um, so I hope that this helps everybody and thanks for watching.